The world of Parasport is more than medals and accolades. Join hosts Greg Westlake and Travis Morrow as they delve deeper and examine the important issues impacting sport. This is Beyond the Field. Welcome to the show. I'm Travis Morrow. Today on Beyond the Field, we're talking about life after sport. Coming up after the break, Greg chats with nurse, snowboarder, and Beijing hopeful Sarah Cormier about pursuing two careers at once. But first, we're going to talk to Josh Vandervies, a former para bocce sensation turned lawyer who works to defend charitable organizations. Josh, thanks for coming on. Hey, Travis. Yeah, great to be here. Now, you had quite the bocce career here, Josh. Yeah, I was on the national team for about 11 years. Wow, very impressive. Now, I'm curious, during that run, at what point did you start thinking about your life after sport? I hope that I always had at least some inkling in my mind that sport was only a, a stepping stone for me to, to the rest of my life. I, I did my undergrad at Western when I was uh, competing. And uh, then I also uh, went to law school uh, at UBC when I was finishing up my career, you know, leading into London 2012. What was it like balancing that kind of school and high performance competition like that? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, first year law school, especially. I mean, it's just, a, I think I've blacked it out in my memory. I can barely even remember it, but it's first year law school, 1L. It's like, uh, they, they say it's like drinking water from a fire hose. You just, get, you just get inundated every single day. You have to read hundreds of pages of commentary and cases and articles for every single class. And I just had an in incredible uh, family, an incredible wife, an incredible support team around me who, who made it happen. Yeah, man, I mean, support is key. Now, you dealt with high pressure and intensity of the international competition, but also the demands and intensity of school. Which one did you find more challenging? Well, I think they both really complemented each other. That's really, I really like that you're comparing them like that because I, I think it, the, the two parallel pressures really made me a better athlete and a better scholar. So on the bocce court, you know, knowing, knowing that I was able to pass ridiculous exams gave me confidence to make ridiculous shots. And then knowing that I could make ridiculous shots gave me the confidence to pass ridiculous exams. Wow, uh, that's awesome that you were able to, you know, build positive momentum that way. So what have been some of the challenges that you've noticed when transitioning from the athlete lifestyle to more of a nine to five typical schedule? I mean, for me as an athlete, that's gotta be one of my biggest anxieties uh, is how am I gonna handle that transition? You know, it, I, I think I think the biggest problem that I went through was the the grief of losing uh, my sport career, and I didn't didn't really know it at the time that that's what was happening. But looking back, um, that that's definitely what was happening. It's you lose something that's so important to you, and then it it is like losing a, a family member or. Or, or something else that's critical to your identity. And so I wrestled for six or eight months trying to find my articling position once the, you know, once I retired from sport in, in 2014. And I was just, I just wasn't all that motivated to find it. And now looking back, it, I think it's because of the psychological intensity of, of what of what happens when you when you lose your your sport career and since then i learned that when you're an athlete and you go into your career you have to wrestle with the looming potent possibility that maybe your sport career was the pinnacle of your life and that the greatest thing that you're ever going to achieve is now behind you and the enormity of that can crush you it helps to it helps to recognize it and when you recognize it you, it just then it just sort of becomes clear well no of course not i i'm obviously going to achieve way better things going forward no matter what even if they are different even if they aren't on the the world stage i still have the same will to win i still have the same 
things inside of me that allowed me to excel in sport and I can apply those to, to the working world. Yeah, you got to keep things in perspective. So back to the support angle you mentioned earlier, how important is it that administrators and coaches within your sport support your goals outside of sport? It's important, it's, it's critical, and it's critical for sort of moral or ethical reasons to make sure that athletes are not just homeless people when their sport career ends. But more than that, um, I really think it's tied into the, the dual uh, pressure pathways that we talked about earlier. I, I really believe that getting an education pays dividends uh, on the field of play, no matter what the sport is. And, you know, the, the more athletes that I've talked to over the years, the, the more and more convinced of this that I am. Many administrators, many coaches might need to be persuaded of that. Um, but I would encourage all athletes to really make the case that being a student, tackling tough goals off the field of play will only help not hurt on the field of play. Yeah, I mean, I think so too. Now, life after sport doesn't end at the career change. I see that uh, you're a family man. You've got a wife and a daughter. Yes. So how did family play into your life after sport? You know, that, that little Olivia Travis, yeah, she's she sort of clarified things for me um, when, when it was coming time to retire because I, I don't think any of us retire willingly. I think we all have to be dragged. Kicking and screaming. Kicking and screaming and clawing. Uh, but no, I was, I was traveling for some kind of training camp and I was gone for a few weeks and I just, it happened to fall on Father's Day and I Oof. had to do, uh, you know, I had to talk to little uh, three-year-old Olivia over Skype. And that just really clarified it for me. You know what? What am I really doing here? It's time to. It's time to uh, move on from sport. You got that right, man. Well, Josh, I have to say, seeing how you've taken all the things that are important to you and how you've stayed true to your values and your character and your profession after sport, it's been really inspiring to me. So. It's been great talking to you and thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. More to come on Beyond the Field. You're watching Beyond the Field. Welcome back to the show. I'm Greg Westling. Today, we're talking life after sport and the importance of career planning. Our next guest, Paris snowboarder Sarah Cormier, knows all about chasing two careers. In her third year of nursing school, she joined Canada's next-gen para snowboard team. Now, a full-time nurse chasing her Paralympic dream, she takes time out of her busy schedule to join us today. Thanks for joining us, Sarah. Thank you. So you're pursuing two career paths simultaneously, nursing and snowboarding. What's it like juggling those commitments? Uh, it's difficult. It's a lot of work. Sometimes it's a little difficult, like when I can't get the vacation that I need in order to go to training or to go to competitions, I end up really just switching shifts. So when I come back, I work a lot more than I would really want to, um, but I make it work and I keep busy, which, you know, I like. So it's just kind of finding the balance between the two. I bet it's tough, but I also imagine you need a lot of support. How important is it to have the support from Snowboarding Canada, but also the hospital to make it all work? really really important um if i didn't have my manager and my coworker support there's no way i would be able to do the snowboarding i can't even tell you the amount of times that my coworkers have just taken a shift away from me in order for me to be able to go to the camps um, or that my manager even at the beginning of the pandemic when we didn't know how stuff was going to look and she was she needed the nurses she still gave me the time off anyway um which i really appreciate i I'm so thankful for the support that they've given me. And then kind of the same with um, with snowboarding, like my coach Greg has always been really, really understanding in terms of if I can't exactly get the full time off, it's important to him that I even just show up for part of the time. But he's understanding that the job, I kind of need my job in order to do the snowboarding. And also I really love it, so I don't want to give it up completely. But yeah, I'm lucky that kind of both my bosses are just really supportive of that. Have you ever considered giving one up? No. 
good for you. No, yeah. I mean, it's it's really, I really enjoy the breaks I get from work when I get to go and when I go snowboarding and it's very different lifestyles and kind of like two different families. Like my snowboarding family, I miss them when I'm not with them. And then when I'm with them, it's, it's really awesome and really, really nice to have that break from work. But then at the same time, like near the end of like a two or three week camp, I'm kind of ready to get back to get back into it and to see the people that I work with. I'm very lucky that the staff that I work with are just actually super amazing. That's awesome. You know, I know so many para-athletes who get their education, but they hold off starting their career until their sporting careers are done. Why did you decide to do both at the same time? Uh, financial was a big part of it. I can't afford to do this, the para snowboarding without my job. It would be nice to, to, you know, be casual at work and only pop in every now and then, even though I do love it as much as I do to, to just make it my number one goal. But unfortunately, just there's the financial constraints. It's tough being an amateur athlete in this country, but I am curious over the course of this pandemic, how has that changed the balance you had of being a nurse and being a snowboarder? We've been really lucky in Kingston in terms of the number of cases and stuff not really getting super crazy um, until the third wave. And that's when it um, when it became really, I don't want to say bad. It was it, it was very tricky for us. Um, we started getting like six, six Toronto patients a day um, into our ICU and we very quickly filled up, um, adding a bunch of beds and not exactly having the staff to fill the beds. And before the pandemic, I didn't take care of ventilated patients and I only, it, we had a two patient to one nurse ratio, ratio, but when the pandemic started, they got us all trained on ventilators. And in the third wave, now all of a sudden, most of my floor is ventilated patients and we have a couple COVID patients. So that was like a really big, really, really big shift. Um, and I actually chose not to go to the camp that my team is at right now. I felt um, it was a really, really difficult decision for me to make because it's our last camp of the season. But I also felt a really big draw and kind of responsibility to stay and help my coworkers. Because at that point, when I had to make the decision, it was it was pretty bad for us, and it wasn't. There was like kind of no no end in sight. Um, so it's been interesting, a little stressful. Um, but I mean, I work with the most amazing people ever and everyone really came together as a team and we're making it through it. So you skipped your most recent camp. I, uh, I sympathize with that. It's a tough decision to make. Uh, I am curious, when you did get away for other camps during the pandemic, was that stressful in its own way? Yeah, that must have been tough. Um, and it has in every camp that I've attended this season, like it's, I'm, I'm on the hill, like I'm snowboarding on the mountain and I get off and I look at my phone and I have like my friends being like texting me and I'm getting all of like the news updates about how many patients are being sent and the numbers that are rising. And that's, that's really stressful because I feel, I feel like I should be there and I feel a sort of responsibility to be helping out. But at the same time, I also have put so much time and energy into pursuing this snowboarding career over the last two years that I don't want to just kind of let that go um, and it's I also kind of have a job as an athlete to Canada to maintain that to make sure that I'm getting better in order to hopefully represent Canada at the game so it's it's a very like um, double-edged sword kind of being pulled in both directions well f first off I just want to say thank you we, we appreciate all the hard work you're doing outside of sport but I am curious so many athletes struggle to find what they're going to do post sporting career do you feel lucky to have that figured out, then get into a high level sport? I'm I'm really happy. And I'm very happy that I already I have my job and I have my my manager who who's so accommodating to the snowboarding part, but then I also know that like I have this career to fall back on when I'm done. And luckily I already like it. So I don't have to go through four years of school when I'm done and then maybe be like, oh crap, I don't really like this job. So I feel, I'm really happy. I'm really happy that I have it and that I actually enjoy it. That's great to hear. Uh, and when you talk to your peers on the snowboard team or any para athletes, what advice do you give them for life after sport? I know a lot of people put stress on the, oh, I, by the time I'm 25, like I should have my life figured out and I should have all of this. But the reality is like, it doesn't matter. You're not put on anybody else's timeline. You can do what you want. Um, 
you have so much time to figure it out. And if this is what you want to do right now, then that's the important thing. That's great advice. How about you personally? What are your goals for not just sport, but nursing as well? Um, eventually, I'd like to get my nurse practitioner. So I would like to do that. And in, in working in ICU, I developed kind of a, a passion for palliative care. And so just kind of doing that transition and, and end of life care is something that I've I've become uh, pretty passionate about making sure it's done right to where the patient's comfortable. Um, so I'd like to do that. Maybe some travel nursing, just, yeah. And how about snowboard wise? I wanna go to the games, that's <laughs> like my big goal. <laughs> I've, put, um, I've put a lot into it in the last like two, three years and I feel like I've grown so much as an athlete. But at the same time, I'm also just really happy and grateful to be having the experience that I have with the team. Awesome. And before I let you go, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you for all you do. I think all of Canada needs to hear stories like yours to know that our para-athletes are doing so much outside of the field of play. So thank you so much. Thank you. Following this interview, changes were made to the Canadian para snowboard team but Sarah continues to serve the community as a nurse in Kingston, Ontario. Beyond the Field will return. You're watching Beyond the Field. Welcome back. I'm Travis Morrell and I'm joined by my co-host Greg Westlake. Today, we're talking about life after sport. And Greg, I'd like to start off by asking, have you thought about what your life's gonna look like after sport? Uh, absolutely, you know, I'm coming up to probably my last games here in my career. So, uh, you know, I'm very lucky. I have parents that always encouraged me to always be thinking about life after sports. So I had my university done uh, fairly young and I've been working kind of off and on this whole time. So, you know, one thing that I love and hate about being an amateur athlete in Canada is on one hand, I've got to try so many different things. I've worked a bit in business and I've worked a bit in broadcast and I love high level sport. And so for me, it's just about having as many opportunities as possible. That's how I've tried to position myself. Uh, how about you? Um, well, I've given a lot of thought to what I want to pursue after sport, but I have to admit, I have a lot of anxiety surrounding it where I've noticed uh, a lot of athletes tend to have a pretty good plan about what they want to do. And I just haven't found it yet where um, I want to find a career that I'm going to be as passionate about as I am about sport. And I just don't know where that's going to take me yet. Do you have any like tips or advice? Well, you know, it's a great question because you, we did a Zoom call this morning with our hockey team. And it was one of the number one things that was brought up as a concern or a fear. And this is from young athletes that are currently in school. You know, they're nervous and they want to be successful in whatever they do. Uh, I think as athletes in general, there is a a will to win, a desire to be successful that in my opinion should be attractive to employers. So if I was an employer, I'd want to hire athletes. So I think for, for someone like yourself, it's just about picking that path you want to take and pursuing it with the same you know, intensity that you do your sport. The thought of having a career, it's not about can you do it, it's are you willing to do it? And that's what I took from Sarah's interview is anything's possible, but you got to put in the time. Uh, I'm curious from you, in terms of, have you heard any horror stories or great stories about how maybe on the employment side they've had, they've supported their athletes? Because for me, it's not every employer that loves letting someone just take off for training camps for week, weeks at a time. Uh, I think in wheelchair rugby, uh, I've seen both sides fit. I've seen some amazing employer, employers and amazing transitions out of sport. And I've seen some guys really struggle. And I think with both cases, you can learn a lot about how to make that transition go smoother. And I think, I think Josh actually is a great example of a guy who's managed to stay true to his character and his values in his career after his sporting career. So I think that's an important thing too. Well, when you look at a guy like Josh, and you know, one thing I love about this show in this episode in particular is we're sharing stories of incredible people because people forget like there's challenges just to finishing your law degree you know when you're blind when you when you're a quadriplegic like there's there's challenges there the world's not always accessible so i think some of the most amazing canadians we have are are these people working high high level jobs with a disability for me uh, i find it incredibly inspiring uh it really makes me think that uh if josh can manage raising a family going through law school competing at bocce at the highest level 
uh, I should be able to get my stuff together and start thinking about a future after sport. Well, and the other thing that, that I would just touch on as well, and it's been a common theme, I feel like for this entire series, is just the idea of representation and the idea that we need to create and carve out jobs for people with disabilities so that the future generation can look up and say, I can do that one day. And so whether that is in high level sport, whether that's business, uh, it's still important. So that, that's my hope for the future is anyone with a disability can look up and see someone who looks like them with just a great job. Yeah, I think that would send a powerful message seeing people with a disability, not just in the workplace, but thriving in the workplace. And I think it's an important thing uh, to consider when I'm going through the transition process. Travis, do you see yourself staying involved in sport when you're done? For sure. I mean, sports has always been a part of my life and it always will be. Uh, whether it be playing recreationally or at a high performance level, I see myself always being involved in sports, maybe even coaching. Uh, how about you, Greg? Like, do you see yourself staying involved uh, in sports after you hang your jersey up? Yeah, it's, it's a possibility, but they got to open up some options. I, I want to do some high, high level things, whether that's work, an NHL job, I want to break through on the able-bodied side. I think that you need to send a message that just because you have a disability doesn't mean that there's any job out of your reach. I think I got to agree with you there because at some point, all athletes need to decide what they want their life after sport to look like. Thank you again for joining us today. And as always, if you want to see more Beyond the Field, check us out at AMI.ca and on the AMI app. Hosts, Travis Morrell, Greg Westlake, producer Ted Cooper, associate producer Alex Smythe, videographer Matthew McGurk, Editors Manuel Grados Andrade, Matthew McGurk. Integrated Described Video Specialist Ron Rickford. Audio Post Mike Monson. Graphics Mike Smith. Senior Producer Michelle Dudas. President and CEO David Arrington. Copyright 2021. Accessible Media Inc.